email or phone call, and we can definitely provide that. All right. Well, I am also excited because I have someone joining me today. We're pleased to have one of our admissions ambassadors with us. Um, Jordan, if you can introduce yourself, tell us who you are, where you're from, how long have you been a DPT student? So my name is Jordan. I am a second year DPT student. I'm also my second year living in Worcester, so I can answer some questions. Normally, I would pass that off to my friend Kate, but she's not here today. Um, I'm originally from Rhode Island. I went to Johnson & Wales for undergrad in Rhode Island, and I was a biology major. But yeah, I'm excited to be here today. All right. And you you said you're in your second year? Is that yeah, I'm in my second year. Wow. Okay. So you've experienced those first year jitters and you went through all of that. So we'll be interested to hear how all that worked out. Um, all right. Well, we're going to go ahead and get started. Before we begin, though, I do want to let you know that if you have questions, please put your questions in the question answer chat at the bottom. Um, you should be able to see that. It's a Q&A section at the bottom. If you can put your questions in there, and then at the end of the presentation, um, I can address those one by one for anyone who wants to stick around for that. Okay. So let's start out with talking about, did you know? These are some wonderful facts about um, MCPHS. So healthcare is definitely a great field to get into right now. I mean, it's pretty obvious that healthcare is one of the largest employers in the United States. And with an aging population, job openings are projected to increase over the next decade or so. So job security is definitely number one in the field of healthcare. MCPHS is a healthcare specific university which means that that is our main focus. So you're not going to find students that are in business management or um, information technology or any of those other types of um, interest. We are strictly healthcare. However, we do offer 100 programs in different healthcare fields. So healthcare is our specialty. You'll find that many of our faculty have clinical sites where they have affiliation, which means that we are always up to date on the current healthcare system. So any changes, whether it's legislation, um, technology, research-wise, we are always making sure that we are up on top of those things. And additionally, all of our students are working towards other healthcare professions. So we've also been around for quite some time. The university is celebrating its 200th anniversary. We started out as a small pharmacy school in Boston and of course have grown tremendously. We now have over 7,500 students between our Boston, Worcester and Manchester campus. Plus we also have a very um, robust, I would say online branch where you can also take online courses as well. And finally, MCPHS prides itself on maintaining clinical affiliations with some of the leading medical institutions in the nation. And on our slide, you'll see there's just a few mentioned, but we have so many clinical affiliations throughout the nation that um, when it comes to clinicals, and we'll discuss this later, that you should not have any problem with finding a clinical site to complete your clinicals. All right. So why MCPHS? What makes us stand out from other institutions? So number one, we have number one, or we were ranked number one for earning power. So this is something from the Wall Street Journal slash Times Higher Education, ranked MCPHS ahead of Georgetown and Harvard in the earning power of its graduates. That blew me away. I mean, number one in the nation is amazing. So you are definitely getting um, a huge return on your investment. Um, a couple of other things I want to point out, we're number three in the country for value. Uh, when it comes to economic value that we provide for our students, we're number four in the nation for being most transformative. Um, 
as far as producing top earners, MCPHS is ranked number two in New England and number six in the nation for median salary ahead of other premier institutions. And then of course, diversity is found among our campus along with our students and our faculty. And so we're in the top 15% when it comes to diversity. So um, a little bragging rights there on MCPHS, we always like to share. <laughs> All right, let's go on to the next slide. So let's talk a little bit about Worcester. So Worcester is the campus where the Doctor of Physical Therapy program is housed. The city of Worcester is about an hour west of Boston. It is the second largest city in New England, after Boston, of course, and it is known as one of the fastest growing hubs of innovation in the United States. I know for a fact that the city of Worcester is um, in the process of re- um, vigorating and reinventing the city um, and really pouring a lot of dollars into the city to um, just make it a, a little bit more, um, what's the word I'm looking for, Jordan? <laughs> Reinvigorating the city. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh -huh. so, um, and the reason why is because if you look at our slides, you'll see that there are 11 colleges and universities in Worcester alone. That's huge. So this is definitely a city where you will find college students walking up and down the streets. I mean, it's just with 11 colleges, this is a huge, huge thing for the city of Worcester. And so we want to make sure that we make it like a home away from home. Um, you'll also find that Worcester is centrally located in Massachusetts. So you have easy access to um, the West if you want to get more into like the mountains or the trails, or if you like the beach, you can go to the East where there's Cape Cod and the East Coast. Um, there's also lots of things to do in Worcester. Like I said, we're close to Boston. The city recently opened Polar Park, which is home to the minor league baseball team, the Worcester Red Sox. So if you're into sports, that's a really great thing to look into. But above all that, if you ask anyone that lives in Worcester what they like best about the city, the word food is going to be included in the answer. I mean, point blank. The restaurants are fantastic. I have yet to eat at a restaurant that I did not enjoy here in Worcester. I don't know what it is, but every restaurant so far has been fantastic. So um, here in Worcester, you'll also find healthcare at your fingertips. So UMass Medi Memorial, excuse me, Medical Center is one of Massachusetts' largest integrative healthcare systems. And it's literally within walking distance from the Worcester campus. You'll also find St. Vincent's. Um, there's a variety of other healthcare opportunities within a 10 mile radius of the campus. Um, so Jordan, our ambassador, tell me about your experience living in Worcester. What's it been like? What initially drew you to pursue your studies in this city? So like I said earlier, I am originally from Rhode Island. Um, so I, a lot of the times I um, compare Worcester and Providence and they're very similar. So it did feel a lot more homey to me. Plus it is a little bit closer to like where I, my parents' house is. So that was a big selling point for me. Um, I do live in Worcester like while I'm in school though. Um, but like you said earlier about um, all the food and there's tons of breweries, a lot of breweries around here, and um, Polar Park for the Woosox. So even if you don't like sports, it's still a lot of fun to just go and hang out with friends. It's like a little getaway, because um, obviously like time away from coursework is also very important as much as doing your coursework. So it's just, there's a lot of options for everybody to just like go out. We call it family bonding, um, where we'll go out as a class and do do something fun together. It's so like, we'll go to a brewery or we'll go out to dinner or go to a Woo Sox game. So it's a lot of fun. There's a lot to do around here. Um, and I still feel safe. Um, my roommate is from like the Worcester area. So mm -hmm. we go out and explore a whole lot. And I live right up the street from a bunch of hiking trails. So there's a lot to do around here. And I enjoy living up here while I am. 
Well, good. Good. I, I think what stood out to me the most is when you mentioned the family bonding. I think that is so crucial, especially for first year students coming oh, into right. this huge, rigorous program. They're going to need the second and third year students aren't really around that much. But your second year students, you all really do a great job of in, you know, involving them, welcoming the new students. And I think that is huge, really important. All right. Thank you for sharing that, Jordan. Go on to the next slide. So I don't know how many of you knew that we do offer housing here at MCPHS. Even though the DPT program is a graduate program, we still have affordable housing. So as you can see, these uh, pictures on the slide is just a very quick snapshot of what we offer. Um, rates, you can find our rates on our website. But the prices do include utilities and the units come fully furnished. Um, we have all different types of housing. So you can choose what type of environment you would like to live in. Um, and when I say that, I mean, we have um, rooms that are for you know single individuals, meaning you're living by yourself, one bedroom, one you know bath, or if you like roommates and you don't wanna live alone, we have options for that as well. Um, there are high quality amenities such as fitness center. We have cafes, you'll find computer labs. Um, there's some game rooms and study spaces all throughout the campus, all in close proximity to the residences and classrooms. So if you have not visited the Worcester campus, I strongly recommend scheduling a campus tour because it's great to see the facilities um, in person and to ask specific questions about um, housing. Parking and um, local transportation is also available and rent is charged once a semester and it's charged to your account. And like I said, all of your utilities are included in that as well. Um, financial aid recipients may utilize part of their aid towards the cost of rent if they like. Those, all of those details are typically worked out with our student financial services um, workers. So back to Jordan. Um, Jordan, have you lived on campus here? I did. I lived on campus for my first year. Your first year. Okay. So tell me a little bit about what that felt like, um, your experience being a first year student living on campus. So like... I keep bringing up the fact that I live in Rhode Island, I'm sorry, but it is an hour away. So I was bound and determined to live here in the city anyway, um, just to make commuting a little bit easier for me. Um, so I lived in one of the studios on campus and I was actually very glad that I did. And I recommend to anybody I give a tour to like live on campus if you can your first year, because that's like where I developed a lot of like really close friendships my first semester, which are also very important. Um, I do live off campus now with a couple other people from my program, but I do really recommend living on campus at least that first year because if there's like study groups or something, you're easily accessible to like go and be a part of those study groups. Mm -hmm. Or if there's like a late night activity or something, if people wanted to go out and have dinner, you're obviously right there. So it's very convenient in that sense as well. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you so much. I love hearing from a student perspective that really helps. All right, so moving on to an interprofessional community. This is something that is near and dear to our hearts here at MCPHS. So when thinking about the Worcester and the Manchester campus, um, and even Boston, I want you to think about an interprofessional community. You'll find that some lectures are shared between the Manchester and Worcester campuses through distance education technology. Um, and you can see on this slide that there are several programs that are shared between Worcester and Manchester. So you'll see the W stands for Worcester, the M is for Manchester. So that just lets you know that we do work together, especially with the Manchester campus. Um, and that is something that we really pride ourselves on. That we're not um, separated or singular, but we work together as one unit for both doctoral, master's, and bachelor programs. So keeping in, in that interprofessional um, topic, let's talk a little bit about interprofessional education. 
otherwise known as IPE. So when you're thinking about interprofessional, here at MCPHS, we give students the experience of learning how to collaborate and work together with students and faculty from different disciplines, different schools and different campuses. Um, so at least once per semester, students will participate in what's called an IPE activity. Um, physical therapy students frequently collaborate with occupational therapists, um, acupuncturist for rehabilitation and pain management, um, as well as interacting with phys physician assistants and pharmacists in the inpatient setting. So interprofessional education can occur as research. Sometimes it occurs um, studying case studies, doing community service, seminars, but there's always plenty of opportunities to learn from each other and learn amongst each other. So turning back to Jordan, tell me about a, a IPE experience that really stood out to you um, and how it enhanced your, your um, experience so far. So I always bring up the first IPE event that um, I was a part of, and it was back in my first semester, my first year, and um, we got together with pretty much every single program on the Worcester campus, and we split between a couple of buildings, but um, we would all sit at these tables in a particular room, and at each table, there was one person from each program, and before we went in, um, we had to fill out a chart that had that listed every single um, like profession, and then a couple of options of like these prof professions do these types of things, and then you had to select like oh, um, acupuncture works on um, the geriatric population and stuff like that. So like you had to have like a preconceived notion kind of going into it, and then once you got there, it was a really good learning experience of like oh, acupuncture actually also works on like infants and stuff like that. So things like that were really cool. Um, and then going into this semester, we have one coming up um, with, I believe it's occupational therapy. And then there's also one with pharmacy um, for the patients that we see in the BMW, which we'll get to that later. <laughs> um, but we'll do things with, like their medications and like eye exams and stuff like that. So it's very informative if you can do those opportunities, which I highly recommend. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, as a physical therapist, you definitely want to be in tune with other um, therapies or rehabilitation that your patient needs, you know, if they have um, issues with optometry or if, you know, there's something else that's going on, you want to be able to collaborate with other physicians that your patient works with. So I think this is a great opportunity to do so. All right. Speaking of support, I do want to let you all know that we do have a very strong support system in place for students. Um, you'll hear a lot about CASE, which is called Center of Academic Success and Enrichment. Um, our whole thing is learning to set you up for success. I mean, that's what we're all about. And in doing so, we want to make sure that we provide you with what you need in order to be successful. So we have hands-on supportive faculty that are literally in the same building. It's where students have their class in their labs. Um, the faculty do have scheduled office hours, but they're always available to help students with questions. So there are many resources through our Center for Academic Success and Enrichment, also known as CASE, to help students who may be struggling academically. There are also peer tutors and mentors available to students. And so I strongly encourage um, all students, once you become a physical therapy student, to take advantage of these resources because they are here for you to be successful. And I know it can be, you know, a little tough sometimes coming in in a doctoral program and um, having to keep up with, you know, test taking and time management. So this is definitely a good resource. All right. So in now that we're kind of getting into um, the academia part of, of physical therapy. So this is what's called our high impact learning in the DPT program. So when you're looking at um, 
Doctor of Physical Therapy program. Research shows that students involved in high impact practices enjoy higher levels of learning success. So what the faculty, um, faculty actually created this slide to show potential students or anyone that's interested how all of the practices are centered around high impact learning. So having a contemporary curriculum, student support, immediate experiential experiences, interprofessional collaboration that we just talked about, community service, as well as research integration. All of those elements um, help to support a high impact practice. All right, and keeping in touch with that high impact learning contemporary curriculum, um, talking about the actual program itself, so we are a three year, eight semester year round program. So you will have fall, spring, summer classes. Um, it is an integrated clinical education program that begins the first semester. So like literally your first semester, you're gonna be integrated into a clinical type um, environment. So your first year, of course, are your foundational courses and basic skills, anatomy, kinesiology, motor control. Um, you're kind of acting as a PT aide for your first year in our on-campus clinic. And then your second year is where you're more into patient management courses and applied knowledge. And this is where you actually are now really getting into creating treatment plans, working more closely with patients, um, musculoskeletal, neuromuscular, pediatric, geriatric, and so forth. And then your third year is where you are off campus doing your full-time clinical education experiences. Um, so Jordan, you're in your second year. Tell me a little bit about that applied knowledge and how your second year is different from your first year. So your first year, like we talked about, like the classes before, so those are more focused on, these are particular points of knowledge that you have to know, and they're presented on an exam, like basically straight from the slide. Sorry, that's a loud car. Um, and then in the second year, it's more like case-based questions. And mm -hmm. like, you have to like actually apply what you learned in your first year, plus like what you're learning in your second year still and mm -hmm. apply it to an actual patient or an actual case that's given to you. And like, you have to like formulate like a treatment plan, how you're going to evaluate them, what, how their discharge plan, like how you want that to look like and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. Thank you for sharing that because it's really important to know, um, I almost call it like gradual release, you know, like your first year you're in there, you're in your clinical setting with in the um, on campus um, space that we have the BMW. And of course your instructors are there, they're monitoring you, they're giving you feedback, you're being observed. But then your second year, they're gradually releasing you a little bit now. You've got a little bit more autonomy. You're making decisions, working with your treatment plans. And by the third year, you are literally in full-time clinical experiences. So, wow, that sounds fantastic. Sounds great. All right, so DPT school is rigorous. Okay, it, we, however, we do have programmatic support as we mentioned before with CASE. So all students are assigned to a faculty coach you meet with regularly. Again, we have professional tutors, we have peer tutors, we have adjunct faculty who are experts and know the program. Um, for the university side, again, that's the CASE, Center for Academic Success and Enrichment that I talked about earlier. And then we also have an Office of Student Access and Accommodations. So for students who have special needs or have special learning styles that are gonna help them to be successful, we're able to accommodate you for that. Okay, so talking about student support, preparing you for your career. I mean, at the end of the day, this is really what you're here for, is to be able to walk away ready to become a doctor of physical therapy. And in doing so, you need to prepare for the National Physical Therapy Examination. So the good news is that at MCPHS, we, do, we don't wait 
until like the last semester to say, oh, well, let's get ready for the NPTE. Not a good idea. Instead, we begin in the spring of your second year, practicing the exam, item analysis, doing a 15 week content review in your final semester. So these are all um, activities that are used to help prepare you to be successful in passing. We've historically held high in PTE pass rates of 100%. So this is definitely, again, a good return on your investment. As it relates to career preparation, there is a residency and fellowship panel. We have career fairs as well as university counseling and resources. So definitely by the time you graduate, you will be ready to sit for the NPTE. How do you feel about that, Jordan? It's Nervous. coming up. <laughs> coming up fast. <laughs> oh, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. All right. And in keeping in with that high impact learning, let's talk a little bit about the immediate integrated clinical education. So like I mentioned before, in your first year, literally first semester, you're going to be working in our Balance Movement and Wellness Center, which is an actual physical therapy clinic that we have on our Worcester campus. Um, during this time, you're going to be observing experts, delivering clinical care, as well as applying what you've learned and delivering that care to actual patients. So this is not an actor. We don't bring in um, people to pretend. These are real individuals with real rehabilitation needs. And that really brings a, a more real world aspect to your learning here at MCPHS. I think that's fantastic. All right, so talking about integrated clinical education. So when it's time for you to begin your clinicals, um, we do like to give you a lot of variety um, of choices. So we have options for acute hospitals, rehab hospitals, early intervention, you have school settings if that's what you prefer and you wanna maybe work with pediatrics, private practice, home care, and memory care units. So it's important to have conversations with your faculty advisor early on as to what areas of interest you have. Um, but over here on the slide, you'll see that these are just a few of the um, clinical affiliations that we have here at MCPHS that um, are pretty popular. Okay, so talking again about the high impact learning, immediate integrated clinical education. So in our Balanced Movement and Wellness Center, um, second year students um, will serve as mentors for our first year students. Um, second year students will begin performing patient evaluations as Jordan mentioned earlier, and designing and implementing plans of care. So Jordan, let me ask you, what type of accountability is there for you working with these patients? So in your first year, like you said, you kind of act more as an aid. So you're primarily guarding and you're taking vitals and you're helping your second year act out the plan of care. Um, but as a second year, you're implementing the plan of care after you do an initial evaluation. Um, and then from there on, um, you're just formulating more plans, seeing how the patient reacts to them. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it's a great experience. I really yeah. like it. It's one of my favorite yeah. ice rotations. <laughs> and I would imagine you get to um, establish good relationships with the patients too. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of which, that leads us to our next slide. So in with the integrated clinical education, um, the tunnel of love is completed at the end of each semester. And this is the way we show our appreciation to our community participants for the time and learning opportunities that they're giving our students. So the BMW, which is the Balanced Movement Wellness Center, we, again, like I said, we treat real patients in the Worcester area. And so this is just a little video of what our tunnel of love looks like at the end of each semester. 
let's listen. <laughs> that is amazing. I love that video, but it just goes to show you that everything that you do in that clinic really makes a difference for people. That's great. So we, oh, sorry about that. There we go. So we also have, in addition to our real, you know, like our lab where we're working with real patients, we also have a simulation lab. And as you can see in simulation lab, you all practice on each other. Um, so these are just some pictures of students in our simulation lab. Um, anything you want to share about the simulation lab, Jordan, or is it just? I haven't gotten the opportunity to go there yet. I think we're going there next semester. <laughs> ah, okay. So then this will be definitely um, a good experience for you as well. So it's, it's, it's really simulating the hospital experience, but it's a great way for you to not only have fun, but to take the anxiety out of the hospital setting. You know, some students say, oh, no, I don't want to deal with the hospital. It's, you know, it's too much for me. But it gives you a chance just to kind of see what it's like and to, like, it's, like I said, remove the anxiety. So with the high impact learning, there's also interprofessional education as we already talked about. So again, with IPE, you're going to be working on a variety of different topics, whether it's um, here in this picture, I think this is the dementia sensitivity training. Did you uh, participate in that, Jordan? No, I was still a first year and it's second years that go to that one. Ah, okay. <laughs> I'm going this so, year, I'm going this yeah. year. <laughs> uh, it looks really interesting where you pretty much um, get to see or feel what um, dementia is like for individuals. Um, it, it's hard for me to explain it because, you know, that would definitely be something that a faculty member could give more information on, but I think it, it looks fantastic. Um, participation in community health screenings, um, falls awareness, prevention, opioid use disorder. There's a lot of different topics that are covered in those IPE sessions. So high impact learning in community service. So um, MCPHS is really big on community service. We want to always give back. And that's why our BMW clinic is free. It is pro bono for anyone who needs physical therapy rehabilitation in the Worcester community. And so by serving the Worcester community, here we have different events where I know in the middle, this was a group of physical therapists who went to a nursing home and it was showing them different activities of how to stabilize yourself when you're either getting out of bed or maybe if you're at the sink or um, whatever it is you're doing, you wanna make sure that you stabilize your feet. Um, do any of these look familiar? Uh, no, once okay. again, I, did not, I didn't go to that one. <laughs> that one, okay. I know that um, the Worcester Senior Center does a lot of uh, screenings for falls risk. And I think that's what, um, a lot of this is too. And then there's, yeah, there's also- one coming teaching. up for it. Okay. And then teaching Tai Chi, I think they were also doing as well. Um, but the students in physical therapy are ambassadors of the school and the physical therapy profession. All right, here's some more examples of um, physical therapy. We're involved in food and clothing drives for local organizations. Um, we also did the multiple sclerosis jet pool, as you can see up here in the corner um, for the MS Society. We also have student-led service projects. Um, here you can see students volunteered for the Boston Marathon. These are all PT students. Um, and then we also partner um, with other camp organizations such as Camp No Limits, which is a camp for children who have had amputations and prosthetics. So our students lead them through activities such as riding a bike, 
group exercise classes and so forth. And you'll see that picture up here. So we're definitely um, proud of the work that we do as we continually connect with the community. So with high impact learning as it relates to research integration, um, our capstone projects are collaborations between faculty and student researchers in an area of scholarship, such as collecting preseason data on baseball players to investigate predictors of injury. So that's a really great way to even connect with maybe the Boston Red Sox or the Woo Sox to collect that data. Students have presented their research at national organizations. As you can see here um, is the um, APTA conference in San Diego, where a few of our physical therapy students were there to present their research. There's Dr. Joyce. He's one of our faculty members. Here's University Scholarship Day um, that was housed here on our campus. And then this is the data collection, UMass Baseball, that I was talking about earlier. So lots of opportunities for wonderful research. All right, and again, just to kind of um, talk about outcomes because you wanna make sure that you, you get what you pay for. High retention, NPTE pass and employment rates. We have clinical residencies and fellowships, independent business owners. So if you want to open your own PT clinic, you will be prepared to do so. Leadership within the national physical therapy community is something that we prepare you for as well. And graduates become clinical educators and adjunct faculty. And as a matter of fact, from my understanding, some of our students have come back to MCPHS as a um, adjunct professor. So focus outcomes on where our students go are, is really important. All right, so now that we've talked about the program, we've shared how wonderful MCPHS is, now let's talk about application for admission. So the PTCAS is where you're going to submit all of your documentation to them via PTCAS. They take everything, verify all of your documents. You must have a bachelor's degree earned or either expected prior to starting. So don't feel like if you haven't graduated yet that you can't apply. You can still apply to the PTCAS. Um, we will need all official college transcripts. So regardless of how many colleges you've attended, we need all of those official transcripts through PTCAS. We like to look for minimum overall GPA of 3.0. Um, this has not been updated, but we are no longer requiring GRE scores. Sorry, Jordan, <laughs> I know you had to take it, but um, yeah, the GRE is no longer part of our admissions. So I apologize, I'll definitely be sure to update that. Um, but we do require at least 10 hours of PT shadowing experience um, in your PT CAS. Completion of prerequisite courses by August 1st, prior to starting the program. So that means if you're gonna apply for fall 24 and you have missing prerequisites, you have until August 1st to make sure that all of those prerequisites are completed and um, that your official transcripts have been sent in to us. Along with that, we like to see two letters of recommendation. However, we prefer three, but two are required. If you, um, have received education outside of the United States, you would need to complete a WES evaluation, which is World Education Services, um, and they would evaluate your international transcripts. And once your application is received to us, I would review your application. And if you are considered a qualified candidate, then you will get an invitation for an interview. And that virtual interview was where you will sit down with a faculty member through Zoom and um, just talk about how wonderful you are. I mean, we want to see who you are beyond the application, you know, because anybody can look at an application and make assumptions about who you are, but we don't want to do that. We want to meet you. We want to see you as a human being. So that is a very important part of the process. 
Um, so rolling in missions, apply early. We have officially started interviews for fall 24. We had our first set this past Wednesday. So if you um, haven't started your PT cast, you definitely want to go in and start doing that now. Um, again, we look for a cumulative GPA of 3.0. We look at your prerequisite GPA to be a 3.0, but mostly we're interested in your experiences your motivations, we want to do that interview with you, and we encourage you to do a campus visit as well. Speaking of financial aid, keep in mind that all domestic students with valid um, FAFSA on file will be considered for financial aid. We have merit scholarships up to 7,000 a year, um, and it's important to schedule an affordability appointment with Lynn Barry, who is our student financial services rep. Um, and if you, of course, just email me or ask me, I can send you his information so you can definitely do that. Um, and that brings us pretty much to the end of our presentation. Um, this is my contact information. Um, this is my office cell num office number, sorry. This is my cell number as well as my email um, email address. Please do not hesitate to reach out to call me or to schedule an, a counselor appointment. No problems with that as well. Um, we also want to invite you to follow us on Instagram as well as we have a um. I know there's a Facebook page and there's something else too, right, Jordan? With social media? I think it's just those. Oh, so, and then YouTube, that's right. We have a YouTube channel now. So if you just go into YouTube and type in MCPHS, you can see some of the, um, the videos that are housed in there. All right, so I do have a question. In our question, it says, how would the GPA be calculated in terms of repeated courses? Great question. So PTCAS handles all of the calculations for the GPA. It is my understanding that if you have a repeated course that they um, calculate the higher of the two. So let's say you made a, I don't know, like a D in physics and then you retook physics and you made a B. Well, the B is going to be averaged into the GPA instead of the D. You know, we do require a C or higher for all prerequisites. C minus is not accepted. So please keep that in mind for individuals who are planning to apply. Must be a letter C. All your prerequisites must be taken within 10 years. So like if you're applying for 2024, if you took courses prior to 2014, they unfortunately will not be accepted. Um, and then the third thing is make sure that your prerequisites are coming from a regionally accredited institution. Um, we also offer prerequisites here online which is also a really easy way to knock out some prerequisites. And that way you don't have to worry about sending us transcripts. Um, so if you're interested in learning more about the prerequisites that we offer here um, at MCPHS, you can reach out to me as well, and I'll be sure to give you that information. But I hope that answers your question. Okay, looks like we have another question. Does MCPHS consider international students? Absolutely, with 100% yes. Um, the only thing I would say is, again, you have to have that transcript evaluation if you are, if you have taken classes outside of the United States. So that's something that you want to do right away. It is kind of a lengthy process because Wes is going to need your original transcripts. Um, and they're going to have to translate them and evaluate them um, into how America evaluates grades, if that makes sense. And so WES is going to give you a GPA. They're going to give you grades based on the way um, grading is done in the United States. And then you would submit that 
original evaluation in your PTCAS. If you speak a language other than English as your native language, you'll also need to take an English proficiency exam. Preferably Duolingo is a lot easier. It's online. From my understanding, it's cheaper than doing the TOEFL or the IELTS. So those are just some of the things that you would need to know. And we also have an international team in admissions who works specifically with our international students. So if you are bilingual and you need help with communication, we have individuals who speak various languages that can communicate with you as well. Hope that answers your question. Um, are there any other questions? All right, after sending the PTCAS application, what is the approximate time frame for an interview invitation and the result after? Ooh, good question. So once I get the PTCAS application, I review it right away with the, you, typically that first day or day or two. Um, once I review it and um, you meet the qualifications that we talked about, um, then I send you an invite for an interview that same day. So it, it really is a, a very fast process. I mean, um, if you are a qualified applicant, then there's really nothing that's going to um, hold you back or any, there shouldn't be any delays. If there's some questions that I may have or I see something that I need to talk to you about, I would reach out to you first, talk to you about it. And then if everything works out and you're ready for an interview, then I'll send you that interview invite. Once you schedule your own interview, because you do that yourself when I give you the link, um, once you do the interview, then it takes about maybe a week or two before you can get your um, admissions decision. So you're looking at maybe, uh, let's say, I don't know, maybe a week from the time I get your PTCAS application to you doing the um, scheduling your interview. And depending on when your interview is scheduled, looking at maybe another two weeks for us to render a decision. Okay, I hope that is helpful. And does MCPHS offer academic scholarships? So we offer what's called a merit scholarship, up to 7,000 a year. Um, now, there are also other like hardship type scholarships that are available, but that's something that you would want to talk to student financial services about. Um, and they would go over that with you as far as what your needs are, especially with housing. Um, we do offer housing awards and different things like that. So you definitely want to reach out to student financial services. Um, all right. Do the reference letters and official transcripts need to be pre present before turning in the application, PTCAS application? Yes. So you have to send everything to PTCAS before they, um, when you send everything, they're going to review it. They're going to verify it. They tie it up in a nice little bow, and then they send it to me and say, here's the application. But they're not, PTCAS is not going to send me your application until it is complete. So you have to make sure that everything that you have is given to PTCAS um, at that time. And then if you have prerequisites that you're working on, then of course, that transcript will come to me because at that point you're you're done with PTCAS. So I hope I answered your question. I, I hope I didn't confuse you any further, but basically the answer is yes. Everything needs to be sent to PTCAS in order for me to get the application. Okay, good questions. Any other questions I can answer before we go? All right, well, I'm so excited that you were able to attend. We do have um, one more information session next month in November. We also have a November reception 
that is coming up here at the Worcester campus. If you have not received an invite, I'm working on getting those sent out to you. So um, please be sure to check your emails. Oh, and one more question. What can we expect in the interview? So the interview, like I said, is virtual. And basically, um, when you come to the interview, there's going to be a presentation by the faculty. Um, they're going to show you what it is that they want you to know about MCPHS and the DPT program. And then from there, you're going to break out into breakout sessions. So it's just going to be a one-on-one -on -one session between you and the faculty. And what they're going to do is it's going to be an open application session where they're going to ask you questions about your application, you know, like your hours of observation, your essay, you know, especially your essay. That is something that I know our faculty are really big on. So you definitely want to research MCPHS and know why you would like to attend this school and be able to verbalize it in an, a well-formatted essay. Um, I forgot, what was I say? Oh, the interview. So once you're one-on-one -on -one with the faculty, they ask you questions. It's important too that you ask questions as well, because this is a time for you to get to know faculty, what they expect. What can you expect on your first day? What does a day in the life of a DPT student look like here in Worcester? Those are some questions you may want to ask in the interview. And then once you're done, then um, you come back to the main room and Zoom. I say a couple of words and then you go. And then within like a week or so, you will have your answer. So I hope that gives you general idea. And if you are invited to an interview, I always send um, directions so that way you know what to expect and you're not just walking in blind. All right, do we have a supplemental application? Uh, no, there is no supplemental application. It's just strictly PTCAS. Yeah, so, all right. Well, I guess if there's no more questions, um, I'm gonna definitely let you go. You have um, six minutes left. So <laughs> I really appreciate you spending this evening with me. Um, again, I can't stress to you enough the importance of reaching out, scheduling a counselor appointment. Send me your unofficial transcripts. I'll be more than happy to review them. Look at what prerequisites we can take and ones that we may not be able to take. I would suggest doing that early um, so that way you have an idea of what type of prerequisites that are that you need to take. And um, I'm willing to do that. So please don't hesitate to reach out. All right, well, have a good night. And I wanna thank Jordan for hanging out with us, our admissions ambassador. Thank you so much. Is there anything you wanna leave our uh, students with, Jordan? Definitely apply early because um, like we said, it is rolling admissions. So the spots do fill up pretty fast. Um, and honestly, like once you get into the interview, it's more of a conversation between you and the professor. So it's like nothing super high stakes. Obviously, it is kind of high stakes because it's grad school, but it's like not that bad. Um, I remember I was super nervous going into it and I left and I was like, oh, that was great. <laughs> yeah, it's but, it yeah, it's informal. They're not going to um, chew you up and, and eat you or anything. It's really, it's just a conversation. And it's, I can honestly say that our faculty, they're so down to earth and yeah. it's so like just a regular conversation. So yeah. All right. Yeah. So get those applications in. Um, do we get PT cast fee waivers? Um, okay. So whoever was asking that, um, if you can send me an email because I, I can give you some information, um, about that. So please email me at T-A-M-I dot T-R-A-I-N-O-R -R at M-C-P-H-S dot E-D-U. And there it is right there. Yeah. So if you want to talk further about the PTCAS and 
fee waivers or anything, please send me an email and I'll be able to respond like that. Okay. All right. Other than that, have a good evening. Hope to talk to you soon. Bye-bye.